With this piece of technology here, I'm able to detect the heart rate of traditional television media. And uh, as you can hear, it's not sounding too good. I think it's actually just died. No, wait, no, wait. Oh no, that was just the bin lorry outside. <laughs> yeah, it's very much dead. Gonna do a little quiz here. Which platform slash service are you watching this video on? Sky, you privileged swine. <laughs> Joking. BBC? Or those machines in the 20s that people would watch vaudevilles on? It's a trick. You're watching this video on none of those services, therefore you are wrong. You're watching this through YouTube, unless you're watching a re-uploaded caption version on some random Chinese website, which I'm fine with because I'm not monetized. Anyway, the reason I bring this up is to establish the obvious. You, my friend, are contributing to the death of traditional media. Radio, newspaper, television, posters, leaflets, Pamphlets. You're basically pushing a dagger through its heart by not watching it. But I really don't blame you because honestly, why would you spend time watching BBC News at six? The BBC has uncovered evidence that dozens of women were potentially groomed. When instead you can watch Mr. Beast drive a train into a pit. I just bought this train and it is currently barely full speed towards that giant pit over there. Watching the news is like, the government has spent 250 million more pounds of the taxpayers' money in the search for Madeleine McCann. And YouTube is like, yeah, but Mr. Beast just drove a train into a pit. That just makes me think Mr. Beast should do a video titled I just hired two million private investigators to find Madeline can but it will be his first video that doesn't end well oh yeah and also you can get reliable news on YouTube unfortunately guys <laughs> what are we doing Unimportant. I, I regret to Buckingham inform Palace you all that uh, her, her Majesty, Majesty Queen, Queen Elizabeth the third or whatever number she's the second one I think has uh, regrettably passed away. And since I'm already on the topic of news, let's just start there because that is a big part of what I consider to be traditional television. There's this made up idea that you're supposed to stay up to date with everything. everything. Not only the stuff that's happening around you, but literally everything everywhere, all, the, all at once, all over the world, all at once. Everywhere, everywhere, all at once, like the film. Oh, come on, what is it? Personally, I think it's just a sneaky way for the government to make you pay for your license. And I used to think watching the news made you more intelligent and knowledgeable. And I'd say to my friend, Now James, I wake up at 7.30. Uh, I eat my Weetabix whilst catching up on current affairs and issues. Now James, tell me, what do you spend your school mornings doing? Ha! Ah, thought so. You do not consume the news? <laughs> and as someone who stopped watching the news five years ago, I can tell you I'm just as intelligent and knowledgeable as before. Maybe even more so now that I'm not consuming pointless trash! Watching the news all the time just makes it look like you're someone who watches the news all the time. Do you want that? Because all the news really tells you is who got stabbed up in your area and they announced the birth of an animal halfway across the globe. Now in other news, in Hong Kong, Herschel the giraffe was born this morning. He is part of the endangered guinea pig giraffe species. I'm telling you, my perception of the world is just more optimistic now that I'm not putting myself through the misery of sitting through BBC breakfast. Watching it is like driving past a car crash on the motorway, and in the corner of your eye, you're just looking for the crashy, which is what I call someone who's been in a car crash. Just constant, pointless negativity. Writing this video, I found a bunch of statistics, but I couldn't be bothered to put them in the video because they were quite complicated. So you just have to trust me. News is made for older people. Ages 65 and up, you're more likely watching the news. For example, when I was at my grandparents' house last month, the news was always on. I'm not exaggerating when I say this, but the things I saw sent me into shock. This kind of imagery is crystal clear wow. in terms of depth and color. We've not had anything like this before. And then the graphics are very clear, very bold. My mum is going to be very happy, Alex, because <laughs> she can see she's it. going to be reading all of this stuff. Okay, no problem at all. But it, yeah? it does. It, yeah. it does mean that people feel a bit more involved. It's a Talk little bit me. more immersive, yes. isn't it? It's it's more immersive. That's exactly the word. Amazing Scandinavian technology cameras. <laughs> which are really cutting edge. Yeah. I love this. Look whoa, at the shape whoa, of this. Whoa. Think mobile device in hand. Look at that. I love this. You can even lean it. The closest it. Look, I'll get okay? it. It's where I can explain things to the audience. Let's talk about petrol. Okay. Touch again. Let's talk about inflation. Go on, have a touch. Touch again. OK. Yes. The visual effects they use on news production these days is insane. And it's funny because they're definitely not doing it to appeal to younger audiences because they're all on TikTok. I think they've got all this spare TV license money and technology that they're like, well, we got all this spare money. We've got to use it somehow. Uh, how about we create this whole computer generated environment that you walk around in to tell your news? Um, huh? Is that necessary? Yes, it's necessary. 
Why? Stop. Don't speak. I feel like this was an attempt to make a more informative and polished production, but in reality, it just comes off as goofy. Drone shot uh, over the House of Commons. Boom. The BBC is this internationally known institution, and this is what they deliver. Come inside the Elizabeth Tower. We've also got two render engines that are feeding projectors. The news is supposed to be a personal and serious delivery of current events, not an opportunity for VFX artists to sharpen their skills. The set is rendered from the same engine which produces Fortnite. <laughs> Fortnite. Can they not just save this budget for original, well-made TV shows? No. Oh, okay, we're doing this again, aren't we? Because I guarantee my grandpa will not have a strop if they just presented the news like they did back in the 60s and just dumped the green screen altogether. Hello, this is the news at 6. We have just sent more troops to Vietnam and other stuff. I don't know what happened in the 60s, not gonna lie. I can't do this. And going back to my point, their attempt to be modern and cutting edge just comes across as outdated. <laughs> and you know what else is brutally outdated? Their delivery. I cannot believe in 2023, we are still talking like this. The Health Secretary Steve Barclay has accused the doctors union, the BMA, of taking a militant stance and pressing ahead. And I'm sure they only started talking like this originally so that primitive microphones could pick up their voices. The UK news broadcaster voice has a very distinct way of speaking, which is just completely out of touch. Last night at 2.22am, two 22-year-old men were found dead outside of a bookshop in Lee Green shopping centre. It is said the owner of the bookshop beat them both to death with a beer bottle as he thought they were robbing the shop. It was later found out that they were only passing by. Their breathing patterns are so strange, like an alien pretending to be a human. Imagine if we spoke like that to each other. Hello, right. I would like a chocolate ice cream, yeah. a vanilla ice cream, right. and a strawberry ice lolly. Right. Do take card. Yeah. Great. That'll be all. Thank you. Right. Basically, just talk normal, but don't try to be fake normal like those two ITV presenters. Objects that I've shoved up. When the BBC was formed, live TV was new and special. You're looking at Pipe Major Massey, the bagpipe man from Trafalgar Square. And was only reserved for the privileged. It's like they're still presenting the news with this mindset. No wonder people move to social media apps for the news now. The virality of it, the stuff that's important, rises to the top, and the algorithm will take care of leaving out the bits you don't care for. It's a catered and personalised experience. You are given exactly what you want in short form, and that keeps you coming back for more and more and more. Oh. Traditional news, however, everyone is just given the same stuff, and it just feels really unpersonal. <laughs> What a snooze fest. Notice how on YouTube you don't get someone walking across a 150k studio with a green screen behind them. It's most likely someone in front of a camera and speaking to the camera like a normal human. But would a normal human do this? <laughs> Nothing more complicated than that. Take notes, BBC. <laughs> Actually, BBC posts their stuff on social media too, but that's like Waitrose selling their chocolate digestives in a Sainsbury's. But at this point, it's not worth changing anything. The BBC knows that their audience is slowly falling off. And I think they're fully at peace with it, but they just want to milk it a bit more because they know their money comes from all the 80 year olds paying their TV license. So, so fair enough. enough. And we pay it too because every time you want to use iPlayer, this thing pops up and it's like, if you don't have a TV license and you're watching our content, we'll send a 50 man SWAT team to your home. FBI, open up! And we'll take away all your tinned food and then we'll arrest everyone in the house and then we'll also take the fridge because you probably haven't been paying your fridge tax and we'll work for the same organization that do that. So yeah, pay your TV license. It would be presumptuous of me to assume that American and Australian news is just the same scenario, but I'm guessing it must be. I doubt 15 year olds in Australia are like, ah oh, mate, best place to get your news, live TV. I can't get enough of it. Ah, I love it. No, they're just on TikTok, aren't they? A bit as Australian TikTok, so it's like, here's the best things to do in Sydney in the summer. You can go to the Opera House, or you can go to where they filmed uh, Finding Nemo. <laughs> okay, but I only brought this up to one, do an Australian accent, and two, bring up how insane and dramatic American news stations are. That guy was going woke. Stop admitting West Africans into America right now. One of the main characters, Velma, she is now finally out as gay. Green Eminem, you will notice, is no longer wearing sexy boots. Now she's wearing sensible sneakers. I think if our news was like that, we'd see a sharp increase in viewership. A 42-year-old man was brutally stabbed to death in South London. Everyone stay in your homes and hide. If you possess a knife of any sort, dispose of it immediately. On top of that, we suggest you sand down every sharp corner in your home as it poses a threat to your health and safety. By the way, all news broadcasters wear glasses. So yeah, that was the entirety of news. A massive part of traditional media and a large reason as to why I think it is dying. My philosophy is, if something actually important is happening, 
someone will tell me. Now the next topic isn't necessarily pointing out shortcomings on behalf of TV networks. It's just an example of how extreme competition can be the end of you. We're talking streaming services. I'm a big fan of the BBC when it comes to their shows. These past three days, I've binged the entirety of this country. Mum, there's no holes in my crumpets. One of the best shows ever made, beautiful, I love it. And Doctor Who, of course, I've watched every episode of seasons one to five like a hundred times over, probably more. Hold on, hold on, one more thing before dying. Do you know what happens if you hold two identical sonic devices against each other? No. Nor me. Let's find out. And then there's all that content for young'uns on CBBS and CBBC. I did a whole video on that, by the way. Really entertaining, wonderful, beautiful, self-aware content. But with all that being said, they really cannot compete with all these streaming services. And on top of that, social media services. What are we gonna do? So much so that CBBC is actually shutting down in 2025. Well, 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 great, wonderful. But CBeebies, which is aimed for even younger children, is still staying up. I mean, I thought at this point babies were born in the womb with an iPad fused to their hands, playing Temple Run during the eighth month of pregnancy. So yeah, let's just shut down every children's TV service. If you don't appreciate it, then you don't get it. No, you don't get Am I High? No, you don't get to watch Tweenies. No. no. It's like we live in a game of Monopoly and the BBC and ITV are just selling their places to more prominent services. And soon Jeff Bezos and cryo frozen Walt Disney will own every place on the board. From Regent Street to Fleet Street. The fact that I have every Disney film and TV show to my disposal, I feel like I have such power. My whole life I've been waiting for this moment. Gone are the days of checking the TV guide and waiting for that specific film to be on. Now everything is just there. Yeah. In the summer I like to watch Cars, it's just a wonderful film. It really is. I might do a whole video on that, you know? It has literally come to the BBC making fun of themselves because they don't know what else to do. There's a show called W1A, which is just multiple seasons of the BBC humbling themselves. After the brave decision to lose the letters B, B and C from the famous BBC logo, Barney has got some examples of what the new BBC icon might look like. It's kind of universal. It could be, it could be whatever you like. It could be BBC. BBC? Yeah. BBC. Yeah, but without the, um, mm -mm. yeah, but, mm -mm -mm. yeah. Yeah, but, mm -mm -mm. And, it's and also a show called This Time with Alan Partridge, which is a parody of the one show, which is just a tacky talk show on BBC One. Well, I, I... And the whole premise is making jabs at the egos and false personalities of the presenters. Like I said before, how the BBC know their numbers are declining. They're just fully on board with it at this point. Look, Disney, Amazon and Netflix have the money and they, they basically know what they're doing. You can either pay a monthly fee to these services and watch literally anything or pay your TV license and a, I don't know, Watch Antiques Roadshow live. I know what I'd do. That's right, Antiques Roadshow. Whoa! But honestly, I do have to give some credit. Watching television from the BBC or Channel 4 or something, it's like comfort food. It's kind of just what you're used to when you're young and you just go, yeah, sure. Pointless. Actually, not pointless. Spring Watch. Yeah, I love Spring Watch. Sure. But let's be honest, the only adult aimed productions known across the world is like Doctor Who, The Office, Top Gear, Peaky Blinders, then basically anything that David Attenborough makes compared to countless shows that you can find on all these other streaming services. It's like they have good stuff, but not enough good stuff. They need more good stuff. BBC, can you please make more good stuff? And even then, most of the shows that I listed then, you can just find on Netflix. People don't even watch it on BBC. Like they just give it off to Netflix. They're like, uh, I don't care, just deal with it. You know, after 13 years of school, five years specifically doing film and media, and last year I applied to this university that specialised in film and television, and then I got onto the television course, and then it suddenly hit me. Wait, I hate television. Oh, can't wait to write a report on how ITV produced this morning, or how BBC create match of the day, like... Like, oh, no, it's great to use industry standard equipment and like make connections. So yeah, that was the end of that. No, I have more to say. Why would I dive headfirst, spending tens of thousands of pounds running into an industry that I know is on its deathbed? Honestly, joining it would be like becoming a caretaker, maintaining an industry that's falling into the abyss and ensuring it doesn't die. I'd just end up being an IV bag to the BBC. I'd just be running around like, your coffee, your coffee. Um, does anybody in here want coffee? <laughs>
Um, Mr. Producer, sir, do you want some coffee? OK, I'll get your old coffee. Hang on. I'm no coffee boy. I'm a creative. I'm a creator. I'm a filmmaker. That's what I am. That was all very deeply negative, but that's just where my mind wanders when I think about joining that toxic world. But overall, I think we should just ask ourselves, what in the hell is the gone darn point of traditional media anymore? It's just remnants of an older, more simpler time that we've evolved from. And as far as I know, people only tune in so that it can be played in the background for comfort. All the older generations who believe it's the only way to access news and information. Oh yeah, it's going to be sunny today. How do you know that? How do I know? that yeah the news hasn't been on the news hasn't been on yet yeah yeah check my phone what? you can do that you know what do you mean you don't have to wait for the uh the news what? you didn't know that no. cool <sighs> what, what are they teaching you these days grandma come on we. you know for them tiktok is just the sound a clock makes and these traditional tv corporations were a crucial stepping stone for where we are today so come on everyone let's celebrate that so although the BBC and other old timey corporations are failing, like I said before, they still produce good shows. Hang on, let's change setting. I just sat down to film like more, where I was gonna talk about various TV shows from the BBC that were really good. But then I realized the whole video is criticizing the BBC. Why would I spend five minutes like complimenting their good, you know, like video's over. Video's over. Thank you for watching.